Hello, in this video we will discuss about the diphtheria. This diphtheria is infection caused by a strain of bacteria called Corine bacterium, diphtheria that make toxin. And this toxin is basically is known as the diphtheria toxin. This toxin which that will target to the tissue for infection and this will lead to increase the inflammation and recruitment of the immune cell. So this toxin is basically a severe and will lead to uh, cause death also and we will first understand that symptom and on the other hand the sign and symptom so here is the oral cavity which that is contain a uh, throat and inside the throat is contain a tonsil and this tonsil is basically lateral upper tonsil and the lower is the tongue and this which that will lead to whitish gray patch in throat which that is i am not drawing the gray but it is looking like a yellow but you can understand as well and membranous patch on throat will be occur that membranous patch is due to the infection and which that will lead to increase the mucus and this is the upper and lower lip of the uh, uh, um, oral cavity oral region the lips so the, here is the symptom which that will we will uh, cover the symptom uh, so first of all here is the person which that is the infected due to the diphtheria due to the corine bacterium diphtheria that make toxin and which that will lead to uh, 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 which that will lead to give a disease to the person so a thick gray membrane covering the throat and tonsil is the sign uh, and symptom of the diphtheria and a sore throat and hoarseness which that is basically is the symptom and the swollen glands uh, uh, and, and swollen glands and enlarged lymph nodes in the neck which that is a sign of the diphtheria and on the other hand the difficult breathing due to the breathing difficulties due to the uh, enlargement of the to uh, enlargement of the lymph node which that will be respiratory tract distress also occur so the respiratory tract distress syndrome which that will lead to difficult breathing and rapid breathing also and the nausea uh, uh, sorry a nasal discharge and the fever and chills will be occur and the tiredness due to the chills and and fever and the myocarditis which that will lead to tachycardia and peripheral neuropathy this peripheral neuropathy which that is a serious diphtheria disease due to the infection of the bacteria so the risk factor is person to person contact as well as the person to person during the talking to each other which that will release the infected person release the respiratory droplets through coughing and which that will target to the healthy person through our oral cavity to move inside and infect and this infect will lead to infected person and that is why the person to person um, yeah, uh, transmission so the infected person can prevent to others through a mask usage so those who do uh, uh, who don't up to date uh, vaccination common infected area infection children and adult uh, both So the infection children and adult for both and let's begin to other things we will cover so the during the treatment is we can use the antibiotics because the bacteria which that will uh, inhibit through our antibiotics the function of the bacteria will inhibit through antibiotics and the antitoxin during the production of the toxin which that will be inhibited through through our antitoxin drug So the structure of the Corine bacterium uh, diphtheria is the drumstick-like structure. Uh, when we will look at the microscope, and we we, we can uh, we can uh, analytical uh, collect the data through a uh, through a throat, and we can put the into the microscope for understanding the structure of the bacteria for identification of the disease and infection uh, pathogen. 
so this pathogen is the uh, if the uh, if the structure look like this it means the corine bacterium diphtheria are present which that will produce the toxin will target to the tissue the tonsil will cause the tonsillitis so the vaccination vaccine can prevent the diphtheria before attack so before attack we can prevent uh, for the future uh, infection causing process So in this way here is the infected person which that is infected due to due to the diphtheria uh, uh, and uh, due to the corine bacterium diphtheria and this tissue infected uh, where a throat a respiratory tract and this infected tissue how to infect this tissue we will discuss first the mechanism of the infection uh, in the cell and how the cell will be uh, infected and uh, kill so first of all after the infection the immune system will be activated the monocyte will convert into the macrophage after the recognition through a uh, dendritic cell which that will recruit the monocyte and macrophage as well as a b cell and t cell which that will lead to adaptive immune response as well as the innate immune response for the engulfing the endocytosis of the cell through a macrophage and the kill through a cytotoxic T cell and the uh, and the T helper cell which that will activate the B memory cell and this B memory cell will uh, produce the antibodies against this pathogen the bacteria so this is the bacteria which that produce the diphtheria toxin and this diphtheria toxin will target to the toxin receptor or present in the throat region and the respiratory tract which that will be invaginate and in this way remember this is the whole uh, throughout the tissue which that is infected by this where the receptor is present the toxin receptor so the target of the diphtheria toxin will be occur. So the diphtheria toxin contain A subunit and B subunit. B subunit is contain a, 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 a B subunit attached with the A subunit through a disulfide bond. So the diphtheria toxin receptor binding domain B binds host membrane. So the B binds host membrane through a receptor. And the number two is the membrane bound toxin A plus B enters by endocytosis. When it will be moved inside through our endocytosis via a folding of the membrane, the plasma membrane, so the receptor mediated endocytosis will be occur due to the plasma membrane in folding. And in this way, the endocytosis through, uh, 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 through uh, is known as the receptor mediated endocytosis. And in this way, the vesicle form, this vesicle is known as endosome. And the endosome contained inside is the uh, B subunit and A subunit. After this A subunit and B subunit which that will release and separate due to the proton influx. When the proton will move in flux the decrease of the pH. So when the decrease of the pH it means the disulfide bond between the A subunit and B subunit of the polypeptide will be separate. After the separation the Step third is the catalytic subunit A is cleaved but held to the B subunit by disulfide bond endosome vesicle acidified the disulfide bond are reduced and the uh, and the next step is this A subunit which that will be bind with the NAD. After the NAD binding with the NAD which that will target to the ribosome where the a translation of the protein is occurring into the cell after the transcription of the mess, uh, DNA into the messenger RNA and this messenger RNA will bind with the ribosome and after this messenger RNA it will begin to synthesis of the nascent peptide the polypeptide and this will be nascent peptide will be uh, not mm, longer uh, development and the polypeptide synthesis will be inhibited by this A uh, subunit of the toxin will bind with the NAD will target to the 
target to the uh, elongation factor uh, uh, initiation factor 2 this initiation factor 2 will lead to elongation factor 2 uh, will be uh, ADP ribosylate and in this way the ADP ribose form with the elongation factor so the elongation will not occur and the initiation factor 2 which that will be point will lead to the abnormal synthesis of the protein is known as the nascent peptide and number 4 is the transmembrane domain facilitates the passage of the catalytic a peptide through the vesical membrane and the, the uh, uh, last step is the catalytic a domain adp ribosylates and elongation factor ef2 uh, will be ribosylates in this way the elongation will not occur more this horse protein synthesis and kill the cell and the elongation stop and the incomplete polypeptide form and this is the non-functional even this is uh, harmful for the cell and in this way the cell will be damaged due to the target to the organelle transport uh, and produce the pores and channel which that will lead to um, lead to the infection and inflame the cell will lead to recruitment of the uh, inflammatory uh, and release the inflammatory mediators from the damaged cell will recruit the macrophage monocyte and the dendritic cell uh, which that is the part of innate immune response and the dendritic cell which that will uh, recruit the b memory cell and the t cell for uh, innate immune response activation so thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe like and share bye